Hey, Motion Church, welcome to Team Night. It's good to be together here online. And pretty soon, we're going to be back together again in person, in Jesus' name. So, uh, by the way, keep your eyes on our app or our website, uh, because when as soon as we're allowed to meet together, we are jumping on that bandwagon. Um, in fact, if Bonnie Henry keeps her word and ends this lockdown on Friday... Then, uh, then we'll be able to start in-person gatherings next Wednesday, so a week from today. So uh, just keep your eye on the app, and we'll have tickets back up again. Um, unless she just opens it wide up and says, you can meet as many as you want. And then, hey, no more tickets. We'll just get back together. So we're excited about that. Let me say, first of all here, welcome on our welcome team night. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the ways that you served in 2020. Thank you for everything the prayers, the support, the encouragement, the finances that you invested in your church, in this church, in God's church in 2020. And um, that video, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, the video that shows the, um, the 2020 year-end review, uh, what, a, what a great testimony of God's goodness uh, in in. Interesting times and interesting days. So welcome. Uh, we're delighted to be together. We have some, uh, you're going to see that video, that year-end review video. If you haven't already, you're going to see it in just a moment. Uh, but before we do that, I'll just say again, thank you so much for your financial giving. Uh, you're going to get an update uh, from Pastor Joe in just a moment about, uh, about the giving for 2020. But if you, um, if you are prepared to give your tithes and your offerings here on a Wednesday night, uh, then you're welcome to do that now. Uh, ob obviously, you know all of our giving is electronic these days. Thank you again so much for your faithful giving and your support of the Lord's work here in Kamloops and around the world. So let me pray for you as you give. God, thank you. You have blessed us so that we can be a blessing. And God, I thank you that you are going to make us rich in every way so that we can be generous on every occasion. So God, I speak this over your people. I speak this, Lord, that there'd be brand new businesses that would start this year, 2021. And God, your favor would surround them and mark them out because they have honored you. And so God, we thank you for that. We give you the first, and this is the first of the year. Thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, God bless you as you give. And I'm gonna step out here and we'll watch the year-end review video. And then we'll come back with some updates. BTC family, here's your update Tuesday morning as the situation is rapidly changing. And yesterday our province expanded the ban on gatherings to a maximum of 50 people. Ryan and Portia and Piper are moving into their new house this week. to the newest team members, 
uh, coming on staff, Dane and Carly Whitney, that are going to be directing the ministry school. Hey, Molson Church, just want to say Happy New Year. Um, just going to do a uh, financial report in regards to 2020. Uh, we just want to say a big thank you. I want to say a big thank you to all your giving. Uh, it's been a phenomenal year, even though 2020 was, uh, we were faced with many challenges. But we did really, really well financially. And uh, December results... Uh, our revenue was at 130, which was the second highest December on record. So uh, we're very thankful and grateful for that, which uh, put us uh, to 1.1 million for 2020. So uh, yes, man, thank you so much for your generosity uh, during the challenging times. Uh, we've done more than ever before locally. And uh, also here in the church, uh, of course, we've had to do a lot of upgrades in the technology side and continuing to do that. So again, um, from myself to you, uh, I just want to pray God's richest blessings on you in this new year. And we're going to see much greater things happen. I believe we're going to have a great harvest. So again, uh, thank you so much. Hey, Motion Youth family and church family, we're so excited to get together again. I just want to ask you, please pray for us as we adapt, as we need to. We're so excited to get together again. Keep your eyes on the Instagram and also on the website as we keep planning to get together. Uh, we've got lots that we really want to do, and we're looking forward to seeing everybody soon. Also excited with the bus. It's painted, fresh white, and we're getting it in for a wrap really, really soon, potentially next week. So you'll be able to see that rolling all around the city soon and looking awesome. See you guys soon. For 21 days of prayer, we will be delivering bags for everyone, all the families and, all, and everybody else. This week, we'll be delivering the bags. And on Sunday, during Pastor Johnny's message, there will be a special video message for the kids. Hi, Motion Church family. I love team nights. It's a, such an awesome time to get together, share what's going on, celebrate uh, some wins, and... Uh, just uh, come together as teams. Um, I get the pleasure to share with you some, uh, some of the things that we've kind of are working on um, on the inside of things that not everybody gets to see every day. And uh, over the last few months, uh, we've been working on um, looking at our internal systems and how we manage people, which is you. Um, one of those things, one of the processes as we went through that is we kind of looking at our systems and, and it, Really, what we came across is we were using seven different pieces of software um, to kind of bring everything together. Um, and if anybody's worked with software, they don't always talk together all that nicely, and it just kind of creates a bit of a mess. So during, during that process, we started to um, uh, look at those particular pieces and see which one would work best for us. Um, and we've settled on uh, Planning Center. And one of the main, main reasons is, is we, we find it, not, uh, it's so integrated into what we're already doing, it would be less uh, intrusive to move forward with that particular piece. Um, when this is happening, well, some of it's already started to happen. Um, uh, some of you will probably already notice that our um, giving side of things has uh, been updated. Um, so when you click on the link on our app or through the website, it actually takes you to a different page. Um, that is our first phase. Um, uh, we do have a second phase, which will, will, will launch a new app for us. Um, as well as a third phase, phase that will integrate our kids check into our app. So one place for everything. Um, it's going to be a bit of a process, but we hope by September um, everything will be um, all running and into one system. 
Benefits, everybody is in one place. All information is updated at the same time. We don't have different addresses in different places, different emails. Um, it's one place to bring everything together. Um, and I know some of you are probably wondering, well, how can you help? And here, I'm going to help you. This is how you can help. If you're using our current giving system through PushPay, one of the main things we need you to do, if you are a reoccurring um, user where your gifts are set up to do a reoccurring gift, um, we ask that you go in and you cancel that reoccurring gift. Go into our new giving platform and reset it up. Um, one of the processes we're gonna have to do is move people from our current system that we were using to our new one. Um, log in. Create um, an account, update your personal information. Um, if you are currently using Planner Cent Planning Center services, um, you already have an account. So just go in and use those same credentials, update your uh, addresses, email addresses, give us as much information that's as accurate as possible. Um, I have a little video for you to watch. It'll kind of give you a demonstration on how that new giving platform works. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it! We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Hi guys, I'm CJ. I am the production director and I am giving the update on our video and camera department. We've recently updated our cameras and that's why our footage is looking so good and sharp right now. Oh. <laughs> we are looking for new camera people, so if you are interested, please email us at info at wearemotionchurch.ca. And this is a little video of what our footage used to look like compared to what it looks like now. <laughs> Wow, fancy new camera. Well, thank you to all everybody who came and bring those updates. And um, I'm sure, I know you all love to hear what's going on around Motion Church, especially when we're not uh, meeting together in person. It's nice to hear updates of what God is doing. By the way, just, just wait until the next time you're here in the building and you see what's been going on. We've been actively working uh, taking advantage of the fact that people aren't in the building like they usually are and getting some stuff done and getting ready for the future of what we're doing here. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a surprise when you show up. Let me give you a couple of updates of my own. First of all, next month is our relationship month. We always focus on relationships in February, and so we're going to take three weeks to do that. Uh, by the way, also next month, uh, Pastor Dane and Carly Whitney are going to be here uh, with us. In fact, they're arriving this weekend, and so can't wait uh, to, to jump into what we're doing and get moving ahead. Um, anyways, he's going to be bringing the word on a Sunday, so you all get to meet him here online or in person if we're gathering together already by then. So uh, we're excited about that, but marriage night is coming up in February, and it's going to be on February the 21st. So that's a Sunday, February the 21st. Would you mark that in your calendar right now? Uh, you know, it's not too much to make an investment in your marriage uh, once or twice a year when we put this on, put it in your calendar. You will thank yourself. You will thank your married self that you did this. And it's, it's good for all of us, for every relationship. Uh, so make sure that you get that in your calendar so that you're here with us for that February the 21st. One more thing you heard Alona talking about the deliveries that we're making and we do have a crew of delivery drivers that already we've um, that we've already seconded them and put them to work uh, delivering the children's stuff. But this week we're delivering something for everybody in the church uh, because we're delivering those pray first bracelets. 
And so we want everybody to have those. And so it's not just the delivery to kids, it's the delivery to every home. So we need more drivers for this weekend. So if you can help us out this Friday or Saturday to deliver a bag to maybe 10 or 15 or 20 houses, uh, depending on what you could do uh, in your area of Kamloops, then would you let us know? Just send an email to info at We Are Motion Church. Say, I can deliver some bags this weekend. And we're just going to deliver those bracelets and a little bit of information to everybody that's a part of Motion Church and make sure that you all have them for this upcoming prayer and fasting season. So I'm excited about that. Let me just share with you a couple of things and then I want to give you some challenges. So first of all, I want to share with you what I believe God is leading us into here in 2021. And then I'm going to give you seven uh, little challenges as a leader of what God wants to do in your life this year. So first of all, I want to say that this year, 2021, is going to be the year of advancing God's kingdom by the power of his Holy Spirit. And it's God's word, God's dreams, God's kingdom, God's love that we're going to spread and it's going to increase this year. And, 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 and I've been marveling again at the authority of God's word and the authority that God gives us to declare his word on his behalf. I remember years ago hearing Reinhard Bonnke say something, and if you don't know who Reinhard Bonnke is, you can Google him later, but Reinhard Bonnke said this. He said, God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. That's, that, what he was saying was God put his authority on his word. And maybe you're wondering, well, how can that even be? Well, well how it happens is because you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is on your life. And so it takes your words as you share God's word. It's God's super on your natural. Do you remember at the very beginning when God was creating the world, it says that, 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 that was, the world was void and formless and deep darkness and, and God spoke into existence all these things. It's God's word that entered into that deep darkness, that void formless void and and what was happening while that was going on while God was speaking it says that the spirit of God was in motion was moving over that deep darkness over the deep waters over the darkness and 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 let me just say this God's word is accomplished by God's holy spirit and so we're going to proclaim his word and we're going to believe the words that have been spoken by God for this house, for our lives, that those are going to increase and we're going to move ahead with them in 2021. God is going to keep us in motion. Let me remind you of our mission is that we're believing God for every single person in our community to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. That's God's plan for every single person, and so we're going to do that. It's repetitive. It's easy to remember. Uh, we keep praying that over every single person. Listen, it's a new semester for groups, and uh, we're going to find out on Friday if we'll be able to proceed with in-person gatherings for groups uh, or how we'll be able to do that. Um, let's hope that Bonnie Henry keeps her word in Jesus' name. But I believe that 2021 is going to be a year of multiplication, that because of the authority that we have that God has given to us, we are going to see multiplication. We're going to see, first of all, we're going to see a multiplication of leadership. Motion College is launching this September. If you haven't considered it, pray about it and ask God if God would like you to be a part of that, that first semester of Motion College coming up this September. It may be that God has things designed for your leadership in this next season, and this will be a great preparation for you. We're going to multiply leaders. We're going to multiply influence in our city. Um, I really believe like this past year, we were able to do more for our city care partners than we've ever done in the history of our church. And I think we're going to only be able to increase that next year, this coming year now in 2020. And that's, that's everyone. That's from the Mustard Seed and the Pregnancy Care Center, our, some of our partners here in the city. But I believe that we're going to have an influence that God's going to give us access into the correctional facility. We're going to see some things change. I, I thank God for what he's doing uh, with Pastor John and the street ministry crew, our freedom ministry, our freedom connect groups. Is, uh, and, and we're going to believe God for some summer things that we're going to do for students this summer that's going to take us into a new level of engaging with our community so that we can present the gospel in a way that people have never heard it before to people that 
have never had the opportunity to hear it. So, and then we're also going to multiply church because we're going to start this year of dreaming of the next campus that we're, uh, we're going to launch as Motion Church. So let me challenge you as a leader um, that there's some things that God is going to do in your life. He's going to stretch you. He's going to grow you. He's going to encourage you. And he's going to push some of those roots even deeper into your life this year. And so I want to challenge you with seven things. These are seven questions uh, that, that, that I've been asking myself here uh, as the leader of the church, as the pastor of the church. But I want to ask you as a leader to also consider these same questions. Number one, after 2020, what did we learn that we can live without? What did we learn that we can live without? You know, there's some things that we had to get rid of in 2020 and some things that we realized, eh, it's okay. We can let, we can let go of that. We don't, we don't need to bring that back. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. There's some, there's some things that we need to do. And some of the stuff that we let go of in 2020 wasn't helping us move forward. And so maybe we don't need to reintroduce that. You know, I thought of something simple like off, passing the offering bags. We don't need to pass offering bags anymore. We can do it electronically. And maybe that's something that we actually don't need to reintroduce. I don't know. What, what, number two is this. What did we learn that we can't live without? What did we learn that we can't live without? Um, you know, I was thinking some of the things that we learned were absolutely critical for our church. And maybe it became clear to some people that they had never noticed that before. I think the fact that we have our groups became clear to everyone that this is something that we can never live without again. That, that our groups, when we were, our groups cared for one another when the doors on the buildings were locked. When we couldn't gather together as a whole family, we were still able to care for one another through our groups and through our networks. It absolutely was so crucial for 2020, and, I, and I'm telling you it's going to be even more crucial moving forward. So yes, our groups, our community, our worship, boy, didn't worship become so important for those that maybe never discovered that before in 2020? What you know, getting into the Word in 2020, for, for somebody that maybe this was the first time you discovered how important the Word of God was, those are things that we can't live without. So maybe if, even if you discovered it for the first time, you realize, hey, I can't live without that moving forward. Number three. What basics do we need to return to? You know, 2020 was a year of detours. And let me ask this question. What are the anchors that we need to re-secure for 2021? What are the anchors that we need to re-secure for 2021? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, uh, Paul says to him, Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Can I just tell you right now that everybody is discipled by some voice. You're being discipled by some voices somewhere. CNN, Fox, Netflix, internet videos, conspiracies, online activists, whatever it is. Let me, let me just challenge you this way to say, if you're hearing three hours of Fox News every day and only hearing five minutes of God's word every day, then guess whose influence is more powerful in your life? And it's important for us to get back to the basics of knowing who it is that we're investing into our spirit day after day after day. If we're listening to all the voices out there, more than we're listening to God's word and God's voice, then we're moving in the wrong direction. What are the basics that we need to get back to? Number four, what needs to be accelerated in the new year? I love this. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 23 says this. He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground. Come on, let me read that again for you. He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground. There are some things, some seeds that we sowed in the ground in 2020. God is going to send rain on those seeds. And can I just ask you, what are the th seeds that we need to sow for 2021? Because those things are going to be accelerated by God. His Holy Spirit is going to come and bless those things. Let, let me say this. 
I often will think in terms like, let's add fuel to the things that are working. You know, sometimes government gets criticized by supporting or propping up things that aren't working anymore. It's like, why, why are we sending good money after bad money? Can I, can I say, in God's kingdom, in, in God's, the message never changes, but the methods should be changing. The, message, the methods should be keeping up uh, so that we can remain relevant, so that we can give this message that never changes to our, the people that live around us. And so what is, it that's, what, it, what is it that's making an impact right now? We need to add fuel on that fire. And so what is it that needs accelerated in the new year? Can I give you a tip on this one? Find out what God is already blessing and then pour your efforts and energy into that. Go on, maybe somebody right now you're thinking in terms of your ministry, the dream team that you're a part of. What is it that's working right now? Add your effort and energy into that. Find out what God is blessing and then dump some energy into that and see it take off. Let God do something great through it. Okay, number five. Who has stepped up in this season and now needs to be empowered? Now this is important because each one of you, uh, you're in a group. And while you're in a group, it's, be, it's, it's easy to start seeing what is being... Um, what is being exposed in the people that are in your group. And, and some of you have noticed giftings in people that are in your group for the first time. Those giftings have kind of come to the surface. They've risen up. Maybe it's like a flower. They've just kind of opened up over this last season. Notice those things. What is it? Who is it that is stepping out into something brand new and now needs to be empowered in that? And so help them along, bring them along, and maybe you're that person, and maybe it's time for you to step into an area where you never were stepping in before, but right now, what is it that God's unfolding? Let's step forward with that and empower those people. Maybe there's somebody on your dream team or in your small group who has just discovered their gifts. Maybe there's somebody that you heard them say, oh, I, I, I think I could operate a camera. Well, grab them, sign them up for the dream team, There'll be a camera operator. We, we can train. We can do all that. But it's the heart. It's the gift that God put inside that we want to empower. And uh, yeah, we thank God for people that will step in wherever there's a need. But it's much better if you find somebody that God has put a gift and a passion inside of them. And then you can teach and train that passion and watch them uh, just fulfill the calling that God has put on their life. So. Who is it that's crushing it right now and needs empowering? Maybe, you know, maybe you noticed during this last season that there was a parent who was just crushing it at homeschooling. You know, where everybody was thrown into homeschooling, all the parents of young kids homeschooling overnight. Maybe, maybe you notice one parent that's like, they're just crushing it. Well, maybe that's a person that needs to join Motion Kids and be a part of the team that they're, that's their gift. They're a great communicator. They're doing well at investing uh, the teaching and instruction into, into children. Hey, they'd be a great person to teach and instruct those kids in God's word too. So think about that. Who has stepped up in this season and now needs to be empowered? Number six is what need in our city can we meet? What need in our city can we meet? What need in our community can we meet? And I, and I want to ask you to continue to keep praying for Kamloops. We, we declare over Kamloops all the time. Kamloops is the city of God. But there are things in Kamloops that need to come into alignment with what God's purpose is for this city. And so as you see those, as you're praying for the city, if there's a need that you think, hey, Motion Church could step in and meet that need. You know, one of the great examples of this was, uh, and, I, and I say thank you to Carrie Jones. Come on, shout out to Carrie Jones. And she organized an effort, and many of you were a part of this, were signing, uh, filling out Christmas cards so that we were able to deliver while well, Carrie was able to deliver a Christmas card, a personally handwritten Christmas card for every senior and long-term care in Kamloops. Come on, what a great initiative and response to a need in our city. So how about in 21, let's just see what are the needs that God brings to light here in the city and let's step in where we can, where he calls us to and meet those needs. Can I tell you, we're going to make an impact on this city that will be undeniable, even for the God mockers, for the God cynics, for the ones that are hardened atheists, will still be unable to deny the impact that the church of Jesus Christ is having on this city in Jesus' name. So let's believe for that. And then the last question is this, what does your soul need for 2021? What does your soul need? Can I, can I say this to you? You can't lead 
from a place of having an empty soul. You can't do it. Like you just can't keep going that way. You need to make sure that you're leading from a place where your soul is filled, where your soul is ready, where it's coming, it's spilling over. And so can, can I challenge you that nobody is gonna care for your soul if you don't. You need to make sure that you're caring for your soul. God gave that soul to you. You care for that soul. Make sure you're in a healthy place. God wants you to grow and expand in this year. You know, I, I thought this is probably a good time for evaluation maybe to say, hey, how did I do in 2020? When all the challenges were going on around, things were difficult, we were in lockdown, how did I do? What, was it good for me? Did I break bad habits or did I begin bad habits in 2020? What, how did my soul respond in 2020? This is a good time to look at that and say, say how did I do? Did I, did, was I able to handle criticism objectively? Was I able to handle disappointments creatively? Let's find a way to silver lining this and keep moving forward. Maybe in, in 2020 you found people were in opposition to you in one way. Or were you able to accept that without being taking it personally and taking it to heart and carrying offenses? This is a good time to evaluate your soul. You know, are you a peacemaker in divisive times? I wrote that question down because, man, there was so much division in 2020. Politically, and I mean, it's still carrying on. I think they're still in the middle of their election in the States. Racial divisions, all kinds of divisive things happening in 2020. Div div divisions on how we should be handling the pandemic, how we should not be handling the pandemic. All kinds of divisions. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a peacemaker? Can you handle that, that beatitude that Christ gave to us? Are you able to handle that beatitude well and be a peacemaker in the middle of divisive times? And then let me ask you a couple more questions. Number one, where do I need to align my life with Christ and his kingdom in 2021? Come on, for your soul, where do I need alignment? Where I can bring my soul into alignment with Christ his dreams, his purposes, his kingdom for 2021. And let me, let me challenge you also in this new year for your soul. Where is your prayer life? How's your worship life? How's your word life? This is the perfect time right now to say, hey, I'm going to set some, I'm going to set my course. I'm going to set a new focus. This is going to be a year of growth for me. None of us have reached the pinnacle of spirituality. And the day that we do is a day we're already in heaven. So there's room for growth in all of us. Let's make 2020 a year of multiplication for the church and a year of personal growth for each and every one of us. Ask yourself the question, how are my relationships? You know, we're moving into this prayer and fasting starting on Sunday and We'll have some information for you, uh, all kinds of different options for you to fast, whatever it is that you're choosing to let go of, a full fast, partial fast, certain foods fast, or maybe it's something to do with your soul, something that you know is just not good for your soul, letting go of Facebook, come on, let, some of you need to let go of Facebook and get your face into God's book for a little while, but listen, whatever it is that you're going to do moving into this next season, let's let this grow our resolve grow our focus, grow our spirits in, more in tune with God in these 21 days of prayer and fasting. And can I, can I just say that these first two months, as we focus on prayer and fasting in January and on relationships in February, come on, these are some of the foundations that God wants us to have as believers and as his church so that, yes, we can be the light to the city, to the community, to the world around us. So that's my challenge for you. Dream Teamers, we love you. I want to say a big thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you did in 2020, serving God's kingdom. I know I started by saying thank you. I'm ending by saying thank you too. I wish I could say it a hundred times, but we do need to cut, cut the night off here in a moment. But again, just thank you, thank you so much for what you do. Please, 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 please pray with us for this year and please, you know, know what God is putting on your heart to jump in on this Sunday with prayer and fasting. If you're leading a small group, do me one little favor. Reach out to everybody that was in your small group last semester. Just tell them, hey, I've decided when I'm fasting, what are you deciding to fast? Would you pray about it and decide what it is that you're gonna fast starting on Sunday so that together as a whole church, as Motion Church together, 
together we'll be able to go through this season and find God moving us incrementally, exponentially forward into his kingdom adventure for 2021. Motion Church, we love you. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you that you do the work in us. And Lord, we're just leaning into you. It's your Holy Spirit that does the work. Your Holy Spirit is the one that moved over the surface of the waters when there was nothing. The surface of the darkness and the, where there was void and formless. And God, no matter what state we're in right now, your Holy Spirit is moving right now over our beings, over our spirits, over our souls. And so maybe somebody's fresh into this, but maybe somebody's been serving you for 50 years. Doesn't matter. Both ways, Holy Spirit, you know exactly what we need for this season moving forward. And so God, I ask you, by your Holy Spirit, bring us, Lord, wherever we are, but Lord, bring us all in the same direction together. We're gonna see your kingdom come, your will be done here in Kamloops and in this region as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. We love you. We love being your pastors. Thank you for tuning in here on Team Night. And uh, by the way, if you see that uh, year-end review video pop up in your social media feeds, uh, if you're not fasting social media, but if you, if you see it pop up in your social media feeds, would you do me a favor and just share it? Share it and let, let the word spread. Let the word spread like wildfire, everything that God is doing in his church right now. God bless you. We love you. Love being your pastors. Look forward to seeing you soon. Keep your eye on the app because we might be meeting a person very soon.